pull that door shut there real quick. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, it's uh, one thirty. We do have a quorum. Welcome to the meeting of the Planning Commission on July 5th, 2013. Uh, first order of business, approval of minutes that are in your packet. Get a chance to read through those. Any questions, concerns? I'll make a motion to approve motion the minutes. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Um, Tim, you have anything? No. Nope. Bruce? No. Larry? No. Jeff? Moving on to any unfinished business, Chad? No. I guess you guys have anything you want to add before we get started? Is there any appeals cases? Yeah. So there's just one. Um, <clears throat> it's an application submitted by Deep Creek Lakeside Properties LLC for variance to allow the construction of a single family residence to within 21 foot of the front and rear property line. Located at 165 Highwood Drive, Map 50, Parcel 677, Zone Lake Residential 1. Any problem with this one? No, it's kind of an odd lot. You can see it's um, it's very shallow. So Homewood Drive there, that would actually be the front where you have a 40-foot setback. Um, so you've got a 40-foot front and rear there. So you can see it doesn't leave much room for a house on that lot. because they're, they're looking at just 20. 22 or so from the front or rear there now. We had one up there two months ago, I think, with the same idea. Was it? It's, it, it makes a lot of sense to go up there. The lots are like rectangles with the you know, draw away. So. Yeah, they're small lots, just irregular, narrow. Yeah. They're shallow on the sides. There are plenty of long, like, yeah, there's plenty of long, <laughs> but they're just not from, and it's a little, a little road. It's kind of laid out like Mark Hill Road laid out, you know that? Concerns with this? Anybody else? Question. Send, send it on down. Yep. All right. Send it down to Bruce. Uh, proposed water and sewer plan. Yeah. Sierra, do that. Yeah. Okay. I, I wish I had more that. I don't, I, don't I don't have. I'll give you a chance. Oh, I'll just stand. Hopefully, we can make this pretty quick. Um. So the utilities department, they applied from, for some ARC funding um, to put a million, a million gallon water tank on top of this mountain to improve water pressure for the users up there. That is not specifically in our water and sewer plan. So we're gonna add it so then they're in compliance whenever they go for the funding. That's essentially the reason for the amendment. Um, in addition to that, I'm part of the Blackford uh, watershed uh, Committee and we're kind of looking at things that would keep that water supply safe and so I want to put a couple things um, in terms of the water supply for Bradford Lake in the work that the group has been trying to uh, you know summarize what the work the group has done the last couple of years so those are the two things that will be amended into the water and sewer plan so after you guys approve it then it'll go to public hearing and then the planning commissioners can adopt it and send it to MD for their and Maryland Department of Planning for their approval. I don't have like the amendment itself in hand yet. Working on that. Are we going to be good on the time frame? We should be good on the time frame. So, yep. Okay. And so I guess. What's yeah. the reason for the amendment? Is that like more water than? Yeah. So currently the folks at on this. Mountain Road are experiencing low water pressures, like especially the ones at higher <coughs> elevations. So this million gallon water tank will have more water pressure, especially as more houses come on. What's the usual one? Five hundred. Uh, I don't. There's something that there is a water tank up there that exists right now, but I, but I do not have the capacity for that. Okay, well, I was just asking. Yeah. Asking that. We're having trouble getting water flow up even at the bottom of the mountain at one time. For, yeah. for and I don't system, know so. how, like, what yeah. the capacity of the, the reservoir up there is either, so I think that's probably 
I mean, it definitely, definitely needed. It's, yeah, and then Will this help keep up, you think, for the time to come? Yeah, or are we just catching up? Yeah, I know. Uh, this, well, this I has been, yeah. well, this has been studied, so I think this is like the calculated capacity is, that was needed. So hopefully this will meet it, and then we won't have to add on to it again, so. And the ARC <coughs> funding and MBE funding will yeah. cover it? Yeah, and I think, let's see here, oh, and a community block grant, which is federal funding. Um, CDBG? Yeah. Yep. Looks like that is our main sources. So, so the county's not going to have to fund. I'm not sure about that one. So. Okay. Um, that has you, nothing to do with the county. I'm just yeah, but uh, I think CDBG sometimes is a match involved with that, but it could be in kind. So okay. we might just be our engineer's time or something like that, or putting the project in. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Where, uh, where's the water tank going to be put? Is that going to be out of the? Like, is anybody going to be complaining when it's being placed? Or? I don't think so. So is it on county property? Uh, it is. I'm not sure if that's county property. I do have maps of the location. Um, I have like the coordinates here, but it's like kind of just north of the lake, the the reservoir for the at the. And it's on the bigger parcel, so I'm guessing that's county property, Chad. Yeah, is it the one right at the corner of West Mountain Road and Aspie? Yeah. yeah. So it could be very visible. I think the Kendall Camp and some of those, but um, we could paint yeah. it pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they need to have a place that's higher elevation, so you know, that's kind of where it has to go. Slap a big expanse of beach kids sticker yeah. on the side of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess the question is, it's on county land. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Subside area. Or next to Tory Lane or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neil? <laughs> now, do you want to make a vote on that uh, so Sierra can um, receive it? Okay. Then? I need a motion. Well, I move that we amend the uh, plan to include the $1 million water tank as stated by Sierra. Second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? So moved, Chad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> I probably will. Then I, do you, uh, Sierra? Also, I don't know if you want to mention the ag. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the ag land uh, preservation. So math applications were due on Monday, and we submitted 21 applications. Mm -hmm. That is an untested amount of applications. Wow. Um, Twelve of them were repeats. One of those people got an offer actually today, so I don't know if we're gonna pull it out or keep it in because they're. I think their asking price might be different. And then um, it's a total of like 2,700 acres. So wow. if we get it all preserved, but Mouth has an unprecedented amount of money. You normally have like 40, 45 million. This time they have 95 million. So hopefully we'll get some of these projects off our docket because otherwise I don't want to have to keep on. Some people have been on this list and like, this is like the fourth or fifth time they've applied. So. Fingers crossed, we hear back, and um, they all should get new appraisals. This have round. they just not gotten an offer, or have they just refused the offer? Um, some of them we just run out of money by the time okay. we do that, and then so the county gets a pot of money, and they just go down the list. Um, and then once they get to a certain point in the list, they're like, "This is all the money we have left. You can either take it or leave it." A lot of times, people are like, "Nah, I don't want it." But the people who have like 50 acres and might meet their, you know, their actual value of the farm. Um, and then once those applications are left over, it goes into a big pot with the state. But typically they go based on like the farms that don't really care how much the land is worth. So if you're willing to take a hundred bucks an acre because all you care about is like nobody's going to cut this up, they're going to, you know, acquire those first because it's cheaper per acre. More acres per buck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So here's to hoping we have some good ones this year. But we really won't hear anything back until spring next year. So. But the 95 million, that's statewide? That's statewide, and we'll divide it up between all the counties evenly for the first round and then the second round. So we'll have whatever's left over. So fingers crossed that we'll have some projects. Well, then, uh, because of it, I know if there's been like three or four more people on their list for next year. So hopefully it gets them cleared out. So how many got, got through this past? This past year? And at least one because of my car. Yeah, so two, um, so they've, so we've gotten. Uh, we're up to four offers. Two of them have been accepted, but I turned in 16 last year. Mm -hmm. So there's about 2,000 acres of farmland. Okay. So, yeah. 
So in years past, when I dealt with that more, I think the most we ever had was maybe five or six people a year. So Spirit has definitely been busy with that in the last couple yeah. of years. It's, it has been unprecedented how many she's processed. So I'm getting a real like nice process down in terms of like the mapping and like we have a whole dashboard. So when people have buildings, I can just add them anywhere from anywhere like on the website. So working on. The other thing is our, we have to go out and inspect these farms and make sure they haven't built the houses or have illegal dumping or anything. So working on getting all those, that paperwork in place so we can just do, be able to come back, print out a report and be done. So making good headway there. So. I've been there about 22 years ago. I'll still do it again today. So. Anything else on this? Very good. All right, yeah, awesome, thanks. no problem. Uh, subdivision plat. Thank you for the chair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've got um, Poland Run East. Yeah, Poland Run East. I've got on the <coughs> screen up there. Um, this is a nine lot subdivision, preliminary approval, granted back May 2022. These are all on thousand acres roads, so no um, no road infrastructure or anything. They've already approved a couple lots already for final. So this one's ready for final approval. I don't have any other issues with this one. I think the health department is just, just an addition what we did last month. Yeah, so last month we did uh, yeah, lots one, three, three five, five, and eight for final. So this so is now. This wasn't ready at that time. Yeah. And there's no difference in them, really? No, these are all preliminarily approved. Is all four lots, I think they are. Um, yeah, I think they have, but the golf course there. Any problem with this? No, um, I will hold the plaques. Health department still needs time. They were oh, yeah, yeah. out, but I think they're okay with it. So. You want to go ahead and vote on then? Yeah, I think so, and it would just be contingent on getting health department signature before I release it. Motion. No. <laughs> second. No second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So moved, Chad. Okay. And then we've got Cathedral Springs. Uh, this was another one. This was 21 lots approved uh, preliminarily back in May 2022, and they've approved a couple already. Now this is for lot 12. Now there is one issue with this. You can see right here where the sewer line comes in. I talked to Public Utilities this morning. They need to go and confirm that the sewer line is actually brought to the lot. Um, so they're okay with the plat being approved. They've already signed it, but I agreed that um, if you do want to approve it, it would be contingent on them doing the final field check just to make sure the sewer line has been brought up to the lot. And I was on the plat, wouldn't release it till they confirm that. Just that it's there. So there was some confusion about how far in here it was. Uh, I think it's to some point the public utilities knew about. Uh, but they just haven't actually been out and confirmed that it's up to this point. They want to make sure it's to the lot and there's not going to be any confusion. If somebody buys that, that they don't have to bring it. Right. There's no question about who's bringing the sewer to the lot. So, but that has, we need to make sure that that hits the lot. So. Yes. Yeah. And that, so our approval will be contingent on public utilities okay. giving you the okay. I believe they already signed the plat with that with that in mind that they were going to go do the field check and that any approval would be contingent. <laughs> any other concerns? No. Motion. Move to approve. Second. All right. uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. All opposed? So moved, Chad. Okay. Um, Annual report. Yeah, I think you all had a copy of that. Uh, this is something that the state requires us to do. Um, so I have to go through and just for the calendar year figure out how many houses we did, how many residential permits, how many subdivisions, and classify all that and part of what they want to look at is how many we issued in a PFA and how many were non PFA of course we have very small amount of acreage in those priority funding areas um, the general philosophy of the state is try to push as much of your development into those areas which makes sense because that's the areas that have public facilities already but in Garrett County since we have such a small amount it's it's not really practical it's very hard to push all our development in those small areas where we have public water and sewer basically I got a question on page three okay. to, to help me understand mm -hmm. the residential capacity mm -hmm. that we have here. Is that what we have and what we can have, the total available, or what's remaining? What that that would be what's remaining. And I didn't have a new version of that. I checked with um, the planning office, and that was the most recent they had was in 2017. So 
it's an older uh, data. I just put it in there and just put a note that that was the last one I had. So um, I don't know how accurate that is. So it's pretty. So we can double sign the count. <clears throat> potentially, yeah. You yeah. potentially would have that much more capacity that you put in there. That's what I. Yeah. Hasn't yeah. happened in the last twenty years. So. Yeah, you, it's that's the kind of the maximum that they say that's the capacity you have. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't know if it was new and existing. I believe that's all just new. Exactly. Okay, that's what I got out of it. I was I just wondering. Anybody else have any concerns about the report? No, I like that. I don't have any other questions. Okay. You need approval of this? Yeah, and then I would, um, I'm required to share it with the commissioners and then forward it on to planning, or Maryland State Planning once you've approved it. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So moved, Chad. Okay. Discussion about the uh, changes to watershed zoning order regarding container homes and accessory buildings. Yeah, I gave you all some handouts on that to kind of guide our discussion a little bit. Um, if we want to start with the shipping containers. So I think probably everybody's been here at some point because we've discussed this for a couple different meetings. But um, shipping containers are not currently defined or regulated in the zoning ordinance, the Deep Creek zoning ordinance. And there are no specific prohibitions against using them as accessory structures or dwelling units. They're subject to typical building codes and setbacks like any other structure. So right now, if somebody wanted to use those, we do make sure they have a sprinkler in them if it's a new home, meeting energy code, meeting insulation, everything. Um, I put a couple possible definitions just from things I looked up. And so this is one route we could go if we do want to um, amend the ordinance to regulate those. There's a definition there for a shipping container uh, and a shipping container dwelling. Um, I think probably the first thing we need to think about is, is this something that you all want to regulate specifically for that type of construction, or is the main concern more aesthetics? Somebody could still build something that looks very similar to this, so if this is basically a concern over the way these look, that may be something that uh, a more of an aesthetic zoning regulations may be in place, and that's something that you have all kind of shied away from. So. I'll kind of open up. I uh, put some just kind of general questions here. You know, should these, if we want to amend this, would we make them permitted, not permitted, permitted with a special exception? Um, if it was permitted, what about if somebody wants to attach several of these and try to make a twin dwelling or a townhouse? What does that? We've never experienced that, but those are all things we would have to think through. Um, also, should they be allowed as accessory structures? You know, if somebody wants to use one of these for a garage or a storage building for personal storage would it be allowed well then here's you and I talked before before the meeting a little bit Chad about the we went down the aesthetic zoning road one other time um, very difficult sell <laughs> if I remember right mm -hmm. that's back years ago um, I mean I guess I'll get some input here but as far as the how do you if you're policing them under the current guidelines that we have, then do we have any other jurisdiction over them other than to say, put a definition of what they are in your, in, in, in the, you know, in our building code, or zoning code? I, I think for zoning, that's what we would have to do. We would define them, and then we would say, you would say we're going to allow them, not allow them, or say it's a special exception. Now, single wide trailers are a special exception. They've been that way since the 70s. Um, of course, when the zoning ordinance was written, there were no building permits, so there was probably no real way to regulate them any other way. So, well, so if you um, want the special exception, then it would have to be kicked down to the board of appeals, right? Yeah, and again, then the board, we'd have to put some criteria for the board to make that decision. So and they, then they'd have an easier chance of putting a caveat on one end than what we would have, right? They could put conditions, but again, they would potentially have a hard time denying it. Um, now, yeah, so that kicks it down to them, and then they may not be able to say no, but they could say, well, we would prefer um, vinyl siding or, or something. Right. They, yeah, they could put those kind of regulations, whatever. I mean, you think that's even worth trying to accomplish? No, no, it's, um, we've had the discussion before. I don't know whether this is 
something that you're going to be faced with a lot, or this is a few isolated incidents. Uh, my personal feeling is they should be regulated similar to the way we regulate single lines. And if that's if that's um, a special exception, then I guess that's what it is. Uh, so I don't know how we can or maybe we want to be any stricter than that. We certainly don't want to be the fashion police. I mean, it's maybe not that's the only way you're going to be able to do anything, right? Am I correct in saying that? Well, again, I guess it, it goes back to what the main concern is. If somebody says, I want to build this container house, and we say, no, we've amended the zoning ordinance, you can't build a container house as we've defined it, and they came to us and say, well, I really like that look. I want to build the same thing. But I'll just build it out of lumber conventionally. We wouldn't have anything to say about it. You could build the same exact style and build that. Yeah. So. It's a lot trailer in a way. Yeah, so in that sense, you know, if, if the main concern is just how it looks, we regulating that is a different, that, that gets into that aesthetic type of zoning, so. Um, That's why I said, if, if the only way is you can put any kind of a conditional that you go through special exception, right? I mean, we could, I mean, how, how detailed can we get? If we, if we start this process, we have to amend the zoning appeal to the zoning board or the regs, right? Yeah, you'd have to amend it. So some, something like I said, so you define these, uh, you define it, and then you have to go through the ordinance and say, is it permitted, is it not permitted? If you want to go that special exception route, uh, I know with trailers, it, um, it has certain requirements for that. It says they, the boards to look at how close they are to the lake and different things like that. So you could put, you can come up with specifics if there are specific concerns that would gu help guide the board with that special exception. Yeah, and what do you think? You thought you did, you ever look at that one? No, I, I just, I think maybe Bruce has a good idea. I think maybe we, we, we define them as a single wide mobile home for now. Uh, and well, then we see would, if see if they do become popular or not. At least at least they're regulated some by that at that point, and then see if they amount to more than just that down the road or anything. And then we could always redefine it more thoroughly. Then, well, single wides are a very specifically defined thing already, based on them being built to HUD standards. So we can't really just lump them in with that. Okay. Um, so we would have to make a specific amendment to the ordinance to consider them something different at this point. But I think we ought to do something because right now we don't. Chad's office has no guidance whatsoever, right. and no direction. <laughs> you know, much like the solar panel thing we had a while back, you know, they're not defined or not recognized, so they really don't know where to look, right? So I, I think the board should consider giving them some kind of guidance on whether it's an amendment or, or what it is. Yeah, I'm going to go a different direction here in a sense that I was last, Chad said something last me about how whether it's a container or not, it still has to meet minimum building code. You know what I mean? So it's got to be studded out, insulated, all whatever it is. Seems like an awful but then they call it affordable housing, and what's happened listed for what four thirty eight or something that they're talking about. So I mean, it's one thing to be affordable, another thing to be practical and say, you know, is this worth the money to do this? When I could build a stick build up the same thing for whatever. I think you're right. I think it's got to go under a special exception. I think that's something we definitely have to think about. Um, that allows that allows the board to Especially, so, I don't know what's going to happen if somebody comes in and takes five containers and sets them on. I want to set them on a lot, put a roof over them, leave the container, containers exposed. That doesn't mean any code, you know, that we have. But he comes in, the guy says, comes in and says, "Well, I'm going to put my boat or whatever yeah. storage, make it storage or whatever." That changes the, you know, there's nothing that I guess there's anything we can't stop them to do that right now, right? Yeah, we well, they have to meet all the building code. Though. So right, well, right. you'd have to meet egress but, windows. You got to cut holes in them for egress. You, you said you said about either making it them. a shipping, you know, making it a um, not an accessory building or whatever. Okay, I could put an accessory building. Is that is a shipping container? Can it be considered an accessory building? Yeah, right now. So that would be the other thing. Those were kind of the questions I asked. You know, want to? Less. Yeah, so like somebody just wanted to say, I'm going down through your question, right? Yeah. So you guys are hitting on everything I'm thinking about. So <laughs> I'm be my next one. Worried about the accessory buildings, but if you add that on, it's not going to have all the technical. Buildings. Yeah, it would. We would probably look at something like: is it safely attached to the ground? Do you have a way to support it? Um, but like with any other shed or accessory building, you don't have to insulate those. Those aren't used for as occupants uh, as occupied structures. So. so I'm back with Tim and Bruce. I think we probably should do something because 
Oh, and for me, it's aesthetics. I, I, when you say shipping container, I, I'm thinking, you know, what's on the big boat or what's going down the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would think somebody would do that, but I think they were trying to make it look nice. Somebody mm -hmm. said the one that we do have actually looks nice, but what if not? And then if you have an accessory building that doesn't have to follow these other typical buildings, and there you are, it's gonna, it, it, it'll look like the ugly shipping container that I have in my head. I think that's what you were. Right, that's right. But I think right. So in order to start this what process, we, we have to, we would have to amend the building ordinance. Deep, the zoning ordinance. This zoning would just be in the Deep Creek Watershed. Zoning. That's the only thing we have so, zoning. So we could, um, like I've given you a couple of possible definitions. So if we agree with those, then the next step would be to say, uh, should a shipping container dwelling then be permitted, not permitted, or permitted by special exception, then is that something we're going to permit it in all, all districts or just in certain ones and other places will allow it? That's the, kind of the next step to think through. I can remember when we were discussing the solar panel that we were consulting with the county attorney, uh, Mr. Gay, and he said it's much easier to defend a special exception than it is to try to say not to ban them all together. Saying that right? I think yeah, I was yeah, on that day. That's exactly what. Yeah. So you're just banning certain industry or banning a certain type of this or that. Yeah. 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 You want you want the staff to come up with the, the amendment as we need it to be to vote on next meeting, or you want to try to approve something today, or how you want? Well, I don't know. Chad and not here to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you give me. What I was thinking today was that hopefully we can kind of go through this for everybody says, for instance, yes, we definitely want this to be a special exception. Yes, we like these definitions. Give us language, then we can kind of take that next step. I wanted to see where everybody was headed first. Is that what we want to try to do? I like the special exception to that myself. Timmy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I you should go for it. Larry, you okay? With, I mean, I think, I think you need to. Uh, like I said, if we get into the aesthetic, the aesthetic zoning part of it, it's, it's ugly, I know. So then you start getting into that kind of thing. But I think you need to give, you need to have some kind of a guideline to let the board, you know, deal with it once it gets there. Okay. So I'm fine with the definitions. Maybe we can help them out. I'm fine with the definitions. I think, do you guys like the definitions that you have? Those are just some general things that I found in some other ordinances. That's right. Just a general idea. Yeah. Um, you need us to approve any of this? Uh, well, I think we can kind of go through. So if we look under the questions, um, we have said yes. Do you want to specifically regulate them? So there's a um, special exception under that bullet point. Yeah. So the second one, if you'll notice, um, commercial and CR1 doesn't allow single wide mobile homes at all. So if you wanted to take the route of making this similar, to spe um, the special exception that's already in place for mobile homes, that would be one way to do it. Just make shipping container dwellings would basically mirror the current regulations for single wide trailers, and you could make that special exception in the same in the same area, and not permitted in the other two. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, um, and this one was more of a, a theoretical, the next one, if permitted, what type of dwellings, i.e. single family, detached, twin, two family, et cetera, should shipping containers be permitted as an element of? I don't know that we would see that, but I was just thinking, ahead, if somebody comes to us and says, I would like to build a, a multi-family dwelling somehow with these connected, um, it would be kind of complicated. We'd have to look at it, but to me, those, in one sense, these are just parts of the building if you do all the other building code requirements you could do that so I don't know if that's something that you want to do we need to go that much detail I think it's better to have the detail than to have it come up and then Eli and I are trying to find something in the zoning ordinance and don't have anything to go right. by so right. I, okay. I think it's better to get that family, in. is it a single family or a single family or a, a single wide uh, regulated on that aspect that's uh, a little different and I don't know that you can really attach them and form uh, something else Yeah, because I don't think you could take three trailers and 
put them together and make a townhouse out of so them. So you're saying you no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And maybe this would not come up either. It's just you just never know what what's going to come up. So I don't, think, we, I don't think if we if we were regulating it with special exceptions as far as restricting the use of them, as long as they meet the guidelines requirements of that special exception, can you say well you can't have it for a say a hotel? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking you that question. I mean, I know you need a little detail, but how much detail are we allowed to put in to, to police that? You want to be, so basically what we're going to come back and say, we want this to be single family dwelling detached. Yeah, that would be one thing. I guess that's the other. And the hotel is a good point. I hadn't really thought of that, but something like what Smiley's done, that's a, a hotel with the units are separated and he has to check in down below. I guess technically, you know, that's something to think about. Could you? Decide you wanted to do that same situation, and all of my hotel units are separate containers. Right. Somebody could try something like that too. So that, that's what I said. So you're because I I, don't know, I saw that someplace an article I read or something I saw you know the internet or something that they they set up a park mm -hmm. through a common common roof over top of them, and then they stacked them, and then it's just you know it's crazy. But that's how I don't know what kind of zone you have, but it mm -hmm. was. You know, they just took off the, the main front door, put a door, a glass door in front of them, and that was inside of the room of each one of those units. So yeah. I'm just saying that's that's the trend. You know, that's a trendy thing that's happened, and I just don't know whether that's you know the one that's being offered by Rayleigh. It's it has two it has two containers. Yeah. Looks like they're two side by side. So. Yeah, I think it's still just a single family home, though. So right. you can, oh, okay. It's not something gotcha. where they had separate living facilities in each okay. one. That, that would be right. my right. concern. Right. Was one, you know, I guess what you understand is how creative people can become mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when their regulations stuff set. I mean, when you talk about detail, how much, you know, how much detail can you get into to say, okay, you can't do this, you can't do that. But, but like I said about the hotel or motel or whatever, mm -hmm. that's just something I have to see that, you know, yeah, it was built on where it was at some place out west. And all that would still be dependent on your typical density standards. So you couldn't do it on a really small lot. But if you had five acres where you potentially could do five houses, let's say you potentially could do some different things. Could do it for single family. Yeah, that would be that's another option is to say that it's you know, it shall not be an element in any other type of multifamily or hotel use. That's another option. Yeah, everything he said, I, I, that's where I'm at. So okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're just going to say single family, and we have the separate category for TBRUs, but that's we. those are basically single family as far as construction is concerned, so I think we would include those two, but nothing else. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, and Bruce is, too. Thing to, to get down to the thing where the shipping container would be permitted as an accessory structure. Yeah, but as we're going through all this, can that be stopped? Well, you you could. I mean, we can put it in the ordinance if somebody challenges it. That gets to be more of a legal question. Um, I think we have at least one case where um, these are being used as a accessory dwelling, Paradise Run. So I think we have one, perhaps, that we've permitted in the watershed. I can't think of any other. Um, but the accessory building, you know, that, again, as long as it's tied down on a safe foundation or safe um, being affixed to the ground safely, I don't know that we would have much else to say about it. You could just put one down as long as you're meeting setbacks. So that it would be a little more open for accessory building. The only, only thing about being used in the accessory building, they're not going to paint it up nice and blue like that. And it's still going to have the ship of shipping container numbers on it, and mm -hmm. maybe something in Russian or Chinese or <laughs> or dinged up or danged up, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be pretty because we have some. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I think that's a little different. You could just see one just kind of right <laughs> off the ship, basically, and placed right. on the lot. So. Well, there's nothing in there that would regulate how it looks. We can put in we can put in your notes or your name when you put approve this. We can put in there. It cannot be used as, as a as a accessory structure. 
But yeah, I, you can I just put what it could be contested if it's not if it's not permitted. Accessory special. And that's up to you, Jake. Yeah, that's the way you want to word it. Word it too. Uh, now that I've heard the, the <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about that before. I was leaning on to make the accessory structure to match the home dwelling itself, but after what he said, I'm going to add this no. I'm on the no side. Uh, I'd like to say no to everything, but getting back to what Bruce said. With the lawyer, you know, it's kind of hard to just say absolute no. So it's one thing to bring temporary while you're building the house. Well, I guess right, I mean, I've, I've used them all. We, right. we all use all that, but right. yeah. and they, they don't go away for you. Now that beat the complaint because they were there to start with, you know, yeah. but, you know, you put all the people's furniture in them, you put, you know, slides and stuff inside one, and then you left that there when you get the house and then you move back in. But I'm just saying that's, that's just, there's always a gray area in everything that you do. And if you, if you don't cover that gray area, somebody's going to circumvent it. You, you, you see it happen all the time. It's just, that's why I said about being an accessory building, you know, uh, it could take 10 years to remodel my house, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a little flexibility with the type of structures we allow as temporary to the construction projects. So I don't know if we want to put something in there about that or just leave it as not permitted. Gonna say not permitted. Of course, we can change our mind once we before we vote on it or something else comes up. That's where I'm going. Permanent accessory building not permitted. Yeah. 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 yeah, people build a half million, a multi million dollar homes. I don't think they want to ship it to the next level from their next the next lot over. They're standing there. Can you read it again? By saying it had to be on a well, we don't require that for accessory buildings. Yeah, so yeah. If you want to bring in a shed and put it on a gravel, put it on a gravel path. Yeah, yeah, we allow that. That's what I said. I mean, we're getting into a slippery slope, mm -hmm. and the more the more things that you bring up, the more. I mean, it, I mean you better, are we better off to say they're not permitted in the water shed? I mean, is that, I'm not, I'm throwing it out there. there I'm sure what people are thinking is, is it a, it's a non-permitted use. It's probably the easiest way to go. What do you, I'm, you're, you're the guy has got to deal with it. Just say it raw, any type of shit. Raw brush. I'm say. fine with that too, but then I'm. That's certainly, I think, the, from a regulatory standpoint, that's the easiest. Um, <laughs> you know, and Bruce doesn't have to hear special exceptions at the zoning board about them and make that decision. Um, whether somebody would challenge that do that, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. I don't think they should be hanging in cartel toys or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but maybe that's a question for the attorney. I mean, we get a lot of questions about them. Eli and I have probably fielded uh, many, many questions about this. And I think once we start saying like, well, you do know you have to cut holes for windows and we start going through all this, you've got to build inside it to insulate and you've got to do this. I think what, 99 percent of those people like oh this is a lot harder than we thought so we're not seeing tons of these being built i mean I'm, i wouldn't be surprised if we had a, a few every year but i don't i think a lot of our interest in them goes away once people realize it's not going to be easy it's not something you're just going to pull off the back of a truck and then you're moving in two weeks later it's not that process so i don't I don't see that we're going to see well, a massive yeah, influx. Right, because it has happened. It has yeah, it has, so right. it's possible. So, well, I guess I'm saying is that the simple thing to do is just say it's not permitted in the watershed and be done with it, or you're going to have to come up with some way to, to regulate it, which can't be easily circumvented. I don't know how you're going to do it. Uh, it's going to be really tough to put the lease, especially as an accessory building, especially as some of the other things. My humble opinion, they don't they don't belong in the watershed. But that, in my own humble opinion, they don't belong in the watershed. They don't belong in the zone. Is that simpler for you? you believe that or not, I don't know. But I mean, it's simpler in the sense of, you know, you just make it not permitted. So from a regulatory right. standpoint, it's not permitted. You know, you may have to answer. Somebody has like a really cool design. Say, well, why wouldn't this fit? You know, so you do have those instances where then saying no, because we're not allowing that. But you know, regulatory, that is simpler. That's a very clean way to do it. I just I got a funny feeling it's gonna make life a lot easier, period, for 
it was already the appeal board and for you guys and for everybody else involved. And I'm just, I brought that up because I'm sure everybody was thinking it because that's really the only way I could see because especially when I brought up about the accessory go and the other issues you're going to have because it's just like, uh, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, we're, the industries are trendy and some of this stuff's trendy now, you know, the, the bar dominions and the, and the bar and the bus house is where they put apartments in a bus, you know, they take a bus, turn into an apartment, set it someplace, take the tires off, pack and set it down, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. People are seeing that on the, you know, hey, Johnny did this. And some of this stuff we've got to say, we don't, we can't, I don't know how you, one, how you police it, and two, is even worth letting get started. If you want to start, then you're going to, it's going to snowball, you know. I mean, the hotel thing was something I just happened to see in a, like I said, a video or something that somebody did it in some resort someplace. It was neat. Mm -hmm. But, well, you know, it's just something you want to, you know, decrease water again. I don't know. That's the decision you guys have to make. Well, and the rest of the county is not zoned, so there are options to do things right. outside the water. So but just in general, a lot of things we do or don't allow in the watershed, there are, there's flexibility in the rest of the county to do it. Tim, you've been I, pretty quiet. I imagine there's some already in the watershed, so they would be grandfathered. Yeah, anytime we make a change, anything that was there becomes the, the other thing uh, Bruce and Tony mentioned that sometimes they use them temporarily. Would you allow them like our in our neighborhood now, Troy or not Troy, but the Navy's are adding on to a house in our neighborhood and they put all they put all their contents in a container temporarily till the house gets finished. But uh, is there a need to have them Allow them for 30 days for some reason or 60 days or for those call, kind of purposes. I think we just call that permanent structure. I think we're not calling that temporary. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I mean, I know I use those all the time. It usually, whatever it takes six months or a year, right. you know, it's kind of hard to. I mean, I don't know. It's just the more you think about it, again, Chad, you know more than anybody here. And know, this, so. this is one, and those are those ones that are rusty colored and. <laughs> Right. The numbers on them. <laughs> that's that's what's in our neighborhood now. Go like pickles. <laughs> well, they, it was going to be two or three months, but it turned out to six or eight now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go look up. The, we do have a little flexibility. If I could find it real quick about um, what we can do. The zoning administrator may grant a permit for a non-conforming temporary building or use incidental to a construction project when such building or use is reasonably required for such project. Such temporary permit shall terminate at the time of completion of the project. So I think that gives us a little flexibility. If somebody said, hey, I want to store all my furniture in there, I think we would, you know, we could put that as part of their building permit and allow it. And we use that sometimes if somebody says, I want to park my RV there for Typically, those are only allowed three months. To somebody says, I'm going to park it there while I'm building, we'll allow things like that. So Talking about that. the school bus or whatever, have you seen the one out? It's on 135. Um, just past Turkey Neck, headed to town before you get into King's. Oh, I didn't see King's that. Yeah. There's one that's backed in there, some, and they pop the top up and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Painted it. Sky blue or something. It's pretty cool looking. It looks kind of hippie-ish, you know? <laughs> but uh, but it, it, we chuckle at it every time we go by. But you'll have to look for it there. Well, yeah, did these ones that he showed for the for even yeah. like rentals. They, they were pretty. They were really neat. They had kitchens and bath. Everything was just like they're like four of them sitting around in the middle of like a fire pit and stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I shouldn't say that too loud, but yeah, they were they were kind of interesting to see how they did. So all we have to put together for this is. You want to, if we don't want to allow it all in the watershed. We could take care of that now and just. Well, we'd stop to, I think we need to amend the ordinance. So let me, let me write something up that's more official, but basically we'll continue with these definitions. And it'll have to go to the committee, right? Yes. So, and I will also first share it with Mike Getty, to, you know, get his opinion on it. Okay. But I'll, I'll draw something up to say, look, the board or the planning commission has, we talked about this. They want to move forward with not allowing these. Here's our definitions. Here's how we're just going to say it's not permitted. And then I'll run that by him and get an opinion. And then we can look at that at one of the next meetings. And then I think once I present something formal, you can all vote on it. And if you approve it, then it has to go to the county commissioners. And the county commissioners have to have public hearing on it. OK. Anything else about this? I mean, 
Is that tell me tell me if I'm wrong by saying that? Is it something we think would be a lot easier to handle for you if it was just? Well, it's really I, I think it's up to the planning commission how they want to handle that. I mean, we can do it different ways. I think we really just it's up to you guys how you want you know what you see is as you mentioned you don't want them in the watershed. We can make it happen however however you want. So that, I just thought I'd be interested to see what kind of feedback you get once it goes to a public hearing, see if there's any mm -hmm. negative on it. Cause, yeah, see, I guess that'd be thinking, but I just, I look at it from the administrative standpoint, it, it has to be a nightmare to try to put something in like that and then, like you try to do with it, everything else, it's just the point where, you know, and like another thing, we're being proactive with this instead of reactive in a sense. I mean, there's only a couple of them, it's only happened once, now we at least move forward a little quicker with it. Hopefully. Yeah, the only thing I'll point out, just in general, anytime we talk about something being a special exception, it's pretty hard for the board to deny it. So if there's something in particular that you're trying to control, they can do certain things like quiet hours or fencing or things like that, very specific things, but it's awful hard for them to just turn them down. So um, if we're just kind of kicking the can down the road to the, the Board of Appeals, we shouldn't use that if we think they're going to deny something because unless it's in a really bad location they have little power to deny them now, again they can put conditions they could that would be a chance for them to look at them but without some guidelines for them um, you know i don't like leaving them hanging where they don't really have anything to go by either because then we just send it down there and then their hands are kind of tied and they approve it so, okay. so that's what mr gary said yeah. okay well i'll draw something up a little more formal as an actual amendment language and then we'll see what he says. Now for this, for the uh, accessory structure, did you want to try to discuss that any or is there any that? I, I think it's the same thing. Um, as you can see, I put it down there. I put some notes about what the existing regulations are. Accessory buildings are, depending on where they're located and what zone, it's somewhat complicated sometimes because depending on what size they are, they have different setbacks. If it's lake residential, it's different setbacks. Um, you can see I've listed the different things, so um, in the same way we can make those accessory, those existing setbacks more stringent. You know, if that's the concern, that these are too close to the road, you can change the setbacks, you can change the height regulations, you can change the size. Uh, I threw that in there because we sometimes do see very big accessory buildings too, so while we were having that discussion, I, I threw that in. That's not related to the one on Deep Creek Drive. Um, and then are, are there any other controls that need put into place? So I kind of throw that out to the board, what they want to, what you all want to do with those. I mean, this again comes down to how much power, how much <laughs> authority can you have over accessory? I mean, can we make the stringent that you know, accessory building <laughs> The, well, it, I would just point out that it's going to affect everybody. So once we start changing the setbacks, it's not just you know one lot; it's everybody in the watershed, or at least everybody in that district. So I think um, if we're going to to make a change, we need to think through because it's going to affect every single every single unit somebody wants to put in. So what started the conversation was a certain outbuilding. Town, town, center. Center. Mm -hmm. town center and the setback for her is what five feet it is so the front setback uh, for single family homes is 15 in town residential 10 in town center and 40 in the other residential one so just in general in that town center district or even town residential you can be pretty close with the house or the accessory building it was 10 we have a site plan saying it was 10. So it met the front setback. Mm -hmm. well, then the height was of concern because it's higher than the house, I think we said, right? The I roof, don't. The roof line's higher than the house? It it may sit higher, but I don't believe it was a, Right, That's right. So the yeah. maximum height of, it is a, of an accessory structure is 20 foot as measured between the mean level of the ground abutting the building to a point midway between the highest lowest points of the highest roof. So that's like an average of the, the slope of the roof. And then the overall is 32 from the very top to the very lowest ground abutting. So if you have a steep lot, you could potentially have even a very small shed being higher than the house mm -hmm. if it's a big enough lot, if it's steep enough. So And I 
understand it met requirements, but when you see it from the road, it's that requirements higher than the house. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that was some of the concern with the commission. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, yeah. you know, there are always um, potential outliers. You have lots that are configured strange, or somebody does something that's kind of pushing it, and you might have a, a, a configuration that really sticks out. The question is, do we want to make changes to avoid that, or is that something that's going to proliferate or happen again, or is it maybe based on unique circumstances on one lot? And if the issue is in town center, will anybody help her? That's the only one that I'm aware of. There may be other ones that are of concern as well. Yeah, that's whole, the one that whole road along there has an issue with close, close proximity to the road anyway from that point out far way back the road anyway. Oh, yeah. Partially that's by design. I mean, that's right. an area where you have public water and sewer, so you have smaller lot sizes and you're, you're willing to put more units there because that's where you have infrastructure. Part of it's also based on the fact that there are things there that predate zoning, so you have things that don't meet standards just because they're not not being a builder. Them. Does it does would, <laughs> would those structures not been that high if it had a traditional roof on it? Is it because it's just a one pitch roof? Is does that make it higher? Sure, it could have been at that high, but it was just right. roof roof. So it instead of a peak roof, you might you might have been as high, but it wouldn't have looked yeah. as high. Right. You know? And that's because there's a flat side facing the road too. If the roof line would have come back towards the road, it might have looked differently to us. So I guess the next question going to be to the planning commission is how do you want to change any regulation with the accessory building, or do you want to change any regulation with? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of town center. Um, you have some south of the bridge as well. Yeah. And there's two more lots there, so you're probably going to see two more similar situations. Mm -hmm. One on both sides there, two properties. And that might be, like you said, it might be the only one in the Garrett County that had that situation. Mm -hmm. and, and you're you're seeing some more of that. It's more of a, a non-traditional. Yeah, it's kind of maybe new. I don't know. I just think it's yeah. again you're getting into a gray area, man. We want to we want to broach out right now, or you want to just kind of let this go with what they have and on our zoning as it is, or do you want to try to change something? I don't know. I don't know how you change it. I, I would like to, I would like to keep that from happening again, but I don't know how to do it. Kind of what I'm thinking. Sure. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Chad? You're, you're regulating it pretty well as it is, right? I mean, yeah, and that's, I mean, when I started kind of writing out the existing regulations, you see it's not, a, right. it's not an easy thing with accessory buildings. You have different criteria, lakefront, bond lakefront, and different in the different districts, so. Um, is it accessory because it's, the, it's not connected? That's part of it, just in general things like garages, sheds, Pools, it's, 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 not it's not connected to the house, right? Yeah, if it were connected right. to the house, it'd be we would part just, of the house. Yeah, it's just yeah. part of the house. It has different setbacks. It right. has the stricter right. setbacks. And accessory buildings can actually usually go closer to the side and rear, depending on if it's lakefront. Right. Um, so it it's not an easy thing to just you know say, well, we're just going to always make them a little a little farther back. Um, you can do that, but then we have to think through about Lake Residential and all the other districts too. So I, I think part of the big question is, is, is this a one-time incident or is this mm -hmm. something that we are going to see a proliferation of, we're going to see again and again. If it is something that we're going to see a lot of, I think it's good to think you know, think ahead and try to amend the ordinance. If it's a one-time thing, yeah, zoning is never perfect. You're always going to have things that are legal, but maybe we don't like the looks of or kind of really push the limits and aren't really what anybody envisioned, but I don't know that we want to make drastic changes to the ordinance to fix one thing and then cause ourselves a bunch of problems with several other things that people were doing legally before. And about the only thing you could do is subtly change the setback or the median height. Subtly, 
you know, if you want to do something. But otherwise, maybe we do like the other. We kind of watch it. But a property without well, that one meets that right. That one meets the height requirement we have now. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, if you, so you bring it down to, you know, bring it down to, you know. Yeah, I remember up on, oh, I forget, across from the old information booth. No, what's that? Side, no. Yeah, I remember we had an issue up there trying to figure the median height out yes. on that steep slope. I remember there was a house up there. We were discussing that. It's been years ago, but but it's quite a complicated uh, equation. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that was an issue with the highest and lowest parts of a roof, and that one had a cupola right. that was an isolated roof, and the question was, well, what about when it's an isolated roof? Are we just counting that one, or are we counting the whole roof structure? And we, we amended the ordinance to say the highest part of any roof. So if you do have that isolated roof, that's what we're counting as the highest point. Any way with respect to exception on the accessory buildings that could help us? I mean, there would be a, a where you know, at least we would look at every every situation and have a chance. You'd probably be able to be dealing with hundreds of special exceptions potentially. I mean, we do a lot of accessory buildings yeah. from little sheds okay. that are just a zoning yeah. permit. You know, if it's less than 240 square foot, we don't do a building permit. We still do zoning. We do a lot of deep by 10 sheds and things like that that we just check that back so you might have to have three or four meetings a month yeah. <laughs> and again you you know if you have if you kind of push it down the road as a special exception i think then you want to have some guidelines to say well what are you trying to do with the special exception hearing you know do you have something specific in mind or otherwise then you're just presented with it and you're you may not have any direction of what you're going to you know approve or deny the special exception hearing if it was the, the the main problem is what what other town center is the one that has the ten foot setback? What other what else? What other rate uh, residential district has? Uh, what are the other setbacks? We get fifteen in town residential, uh-huh. and forty in lake residential. Now, in the other in lake residential, if it's a lakefront lot, uh-huh. there are certain times depending on how big it is, then you can go within twenty five of the front, but you have to stay farther away from the lake side. Because typically in Lake Residential, you can stay 40 foot from the front and then five foot of the side and rear, but it's kind of flipped a little bit around the lake because I think they want to keep accessory structures from the lake side so you can build them a little closer to the road. So you could potentially do 25 foot for an accessory structure in Lake Residential 1, which would be lakefront lots. So if they were allowed then, is it fair to say that this particular situation that you're seeing is most likely to happen again if it happens again in a town center district that's where it would be most obvious so potentially you could have a a very large accessory building 25 foot from a lake residential one lakefront lot you could have it um, 15 feet from a town residential lot and it'd be 10 from a town center lot but again, those you could also build your house at that place too, at least in town residential and town center. So you could be able to build a very big you know, flat sided wall on a house or something at 10 foot away and same thing town residential. So you could do, because that's my point being that, that five foot make that much difference in the situation we have right now. If I, didn't, if I didn't get it here. I mean, that's, that's what we gotta look at is there, is there good need with both of them? And which one, how do you, I mean, you're right, town center is the one that has the least amount of setback. You bump it out to fifteen, like you know everything else, or do you? No, I was just, I was just wondering, just talking out, thinking out loud, if you could make these accessory outbuildings a special exception in town center without doing it all districts, because that would start to help yeah. us with the problem. With the, with you the perceived problem, potentially could do it just in one of the districts. It could be permitted in some special exception areas. Yeah. Does that help us at all? Um, but again, like Chad said, we got to know the board has to know what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unless you have something specific in mind that helps you make that decision, I think you push it down the road, and then you guys are presented that special exception. Do you really have any reason to deny it? Right. And if that's but the case, there's no I don't, guidelines, right? Yeah, there's not really a guideline there. Well, I think with conditions on it, I can say, right. I yes. Say, I don't want that. Or you want the roof or you want the roof line to go the other way or something like that. Right. Yeah, you might not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a fine line though, I think, in between being you know, the architect.
special committee and doing the presenting of the I mean, that may be something you want to run up the flagpole with your turn, you know, and get the. Just, I'm not saying that the board would have recognized this situation, but now that we see it, mm -hmm. I would recognize the next time. Especially, oh, no, right, right, right. right. Give you the chance to see that without and before they book the door. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I don't yeah, that that's a good idea if we could figure out some some minor direction for them. I mean, yeah, again, you can pick any of those, any or all of those districts, and make things a special exception. Um, I don't know how many we would have done last year. I mean, it would send a substantial number your way, I would think. Of, different sheds and garages and all kinds of accessory buildings in town center. Town center is not one of the bigger districts, so um, we may be able to pull something up about that to give you a general idea how, what that would have meant, let's say, for last year, how many you would have looked at. Um, with special exception in general, um, you know, the board did deny the one solar field, and because it was looked at as very unique, had impacts greater than any place else, so as as accessory buildings are proliferated throughout town center, I don't know that you could ever outright deny one. That would be very hard because I think they're already there. So I think the use itself would be hard to put conditions. Um, and when you say outbuilding, you're regulating everything from the Amish built shed 50 miles out of the road to the thing that you still were talking about. And that's not, yes. the, that's not the intent either. Yeah, because it, basically we just have a category now of accessory buildings and that includes sheds, pool houses, playhouses, a, a swimming pool, all kinds of stuff are in that general accessory structure, accessory building category, and it's catch all of those. Oh, that would take in for a couple days, huh? Yeah. That's, not the, my, that's, <laughs> not, that's not the intent of the, the, you know, the regulation guy that wants to put a little timber truck shed for his, you know, his lawnmower. It's, mm -hmm. I want someone to regulate these guys that are parking 40 foot motorhomes 10 feet on the road. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it starts to get a little complex. I mean, right. you, you could put now a you're certain talking, size. Now you're about targeting a specific. Yeah, I probably shouldn't say that out loud, but I mean, that's what I'm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the big no, I mean, it's definitely an issue, right? I don't care what they're doing. Yeah. The biggest piece of building is what I was trying to. And it gets hard. I mean, there are, I think, other jurisdictions that regulate total lot coverage and different. There are different things you can do, but they start to get very complex from a, a regulatory standpoint. Um, you have a lot of these small lots that people are covering with a lot of stuff, and it creates problems. But it gets hard for us to regulate when we start saying, you know, an accessory building can only be this percentage of a house or something like that. That would would be a potential solution, but it would get pretty complicated. Does this affect any of the Matthew Draper opinion or we? What we're thinking and see what he thinks. Is it, is it that you got um, if it's something specific, I can ask him. Um, yeah, I would prefer to say, you know, if we said we want to regulate all accessory buildings over this size and make them do something specific, I could present that to him. I don't know how to answer that question. Right I'll tell you something to think about, talk about, because <laughs> I mean, it's. Yeah. Just like just like we talked about with the, with the painter, you're, you're getting into very specifically the target is shot at these accessory buildings. But how do you, if you don't do one of them, you have to do them all. If you do one of them, I think you need to do them all. Mm -hmm. And you guys don't want to pull this little five by five shed that's going to go. Well, that's not the intent. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. like a. No, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying. It's, yeah. yeah. To me, that's to me. That's we know we know what we're looking for. Yeah. It's just trying how to get to that point from point A to point B. I'm trying to over it. Maybe, maybe you can just think about it, see if there's some way that you can see that it we can make it work without having to take all of them under the, you know, mm -hmm. under the spot. Yeah. Well, you can do it with size or something. Um, you know, if you want to sell there with lot percentage or lot coverage or percentage of house okay. versus footprint versus. It just, gets, it just gets a little complicated from us to try to figure all that out. Yeah. And, um, that, that's. There's no really easy way out of it, I don't think. 
I don't I don't see an easy way with this one. I mean, the easy ways are to make kind of a more broad, you say, look, you can't be in the front. You know, it's got to be farther back with these. But I think that may catch a lot of people um, that weren't tr causing an issue, and you would then regulate those. Um, and, and that five feet wouldn't have made that much. You know, all down through, you could drive. There is garages up by the road that, tell right. that you never even noticed. Right. So now you're so tall, so big. I can, when I go by there, I, I just see zoning failure. I mean, mm -hmm. that could be just me. You know, mm -hmm. is there a way to avoid that? You know? Well, maybe just as a, a devil's advocate, I would say, like, but if you see a lot that all do meet that setback and there was no issue with them, then maybe zoning is doing its job. It's just more of an aesthetic with that one. Yeah. Is the other way to look at that? I mean, sure. I, I think the zoning failure would be as if you drove by and said, all of these garages are way too close. We need to do something because everybody's building their garage too close. We need to get them all back. I, that's kind of more the way I think about zoning. Um, yeah, the strange case every once in a while, you kind of shrug your shoulders and say, well, 1% of these are always going to be somebody does something maybe that we don't like the looks of or we're out of the ordinary and zoning can't solve all the issues. Right. That's, that's just kind of a point of discussion. No, that's, that's a slippery slope. You, you don't like the look of it. How do you bring it up? I mean, that's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's tough, and I think that's yeah. why you need, I mean, you need to kind of figure out a way just to take a certain amount of accessory buildings in to, we can, you know, the special exception or whatever. I, I don't know if there's a way to do that, but I think that'd be something to look at. Well, I mean, I think I've put all the existing regulations there. I mean, we could just kind of leave it that everybody thinks through those and brainstorms them and if somebody comes back with something specific to say hey look I see something in here that I think if we tweak this setback or we had some clearer criteria for this specific type of structure is what we want to have a special exception or something we can certainly kind of reinvestigate that or kind of reopen this discussion. Maybe we'll do a next meeting with some more thought and discussion. Yeah. I think that's probably better. Okay. Anything else you can think of, Dad? I don't think. Is there anything else you need from us, or do we want to kind of keep the. Do you have anything you, you want to put into the meeting? I apologize for not calling me there, but kind of step behind Bruce, and I guess then I look over and there he was. <laughs> I just, uh, Eli's doing a lot of permits and zoning and building everything, too, so I ask him to kind of sit in. Right. That's fine. No, I, anytime you want to speak up, speak up, man, because, we'll, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we'll entertain. Figure if I, I, if I, I can fit where we're heading. I mean, we all know. Really. Larry had to go make hay, so we're going to let him get out. <laughs> well, can you? <laughs> I go help you, but yeah. I don't think I'm much of a farmer anymore. I've always had mine done by July 4th. I haven't even started yet. Okay, done. next meeting is August 2nd, right? Yes. All right, well, well, thanks, thanks everybody. There we go. Put the hand over. There we go.